Hey, welcome back and in today's video, we have the infamous whiskey lawyer Nick Rakita on today. He's going to explain to you currently what's going on with the Mariah statement, with the cases that were dismissed, dis denied, and so much more. You're going to want to be here. And don't forget to be following the Twitter to keep up with the news. You, you don't want to miss what's going to be coming in the future. All right. We're going to take a look at the uh, statement that... Po First off, I, I want to get, like, what do you think about, like, um, let's say Poppy's statement. I want to get what you think about that uh, and how does that reflect the lawsuit for Marcus Argo. Sure. Uh, so Poppy's statement is, it's a little confusing because if she, if she's hired a legal team, my guess is they would probably advise her to stop talking immediately, to not comment about it at all publicly. But uh, for some people, you know, who are entertainers, there's no way they're going to be quiet about something this big in their news. Plus, they're, they'll probably try and capitalize on it. So I'm, I'm not really surprised by the statement in the sense that she made it, I'd only be surprised if her legal team was happy that she made it, <laughs> if that makes sense. It but um, it's uh, it looks like what she's trying to do. So um, lawsuits are conflicting stories, right? You have one story from one person, another story from the other person. You're trying to sell that narrative to whoever is the fact finder, either the judge or a jury. And so right now, Poppy's laying the, the foundation for that by setting up a narrative where one, she's a victim, uh, two, her past victim status kind of makes her um, less likely to cause uh, Mars Argo to be a victim, and three, that uh, that this entire thing is fake and all of everything Mars Argo has said is a complete fabrication, and uh, that's that's a pretty common and straightforward approach to the lawsuit for someone who's planning on fighting it. And so that's the main thing I take away from this uh, statement is that she's she's planning on on taking this to court. There's no quick settlement out of this. I mean, they may still settle in the long run, but they're at least going to have some opening shots back and forth and uh, and and see where the lawsuit starts to shake out before anyone makes those decisions. Basically, she's coming out guns blazing, saying, I'm not ready to this. This is going to be a straightforward fight and I'm not being friendly about it. Yeah. And, and that was in response to, uh, let's see, um, <laughs> one of her one of uh, Poppy statements in here. Oh, she says, uh, OK, Miss Sheets and her attorneys did not contact us before filing the lawsuit to discuss her accusations of copyright infringement and domestic violence, all of which are false. So Poppy is making it seem like Mars Argo should have to contact her, or that the normal course of business would be for their lawyers to get together and, and talk first. That is a possible course of action but it's not the normal one by any means especially if you're if you're being confrontational uh and taking a strong approach um the way mars argo has gone about this has been absolutely appropriate like sometimes you just file the lawsuit you don't need to come to a table and and talk beforehand you got to let them know that you mean business mm -hmm. uh rather than rather than coming and saying hey you know uh, we're thinking about bringing this. What do you guys have to say about it? They just put it out there on the table. And I, I know a lot of the community was saying that um, Poppy, they feel like because she came at the, came at Mars Argo like that, she could be trying to leverage her popularity in this lawsuit. How do you feel about that? Well, there's uh, there's a couple ways to win a lawsuit. One way is to win in court and to win a big award and uh and to walk away with you know the legal answer for what's happened um the other way is to use the lawsuit as you know uh, poppy says it as a publicity campaign and it that goes for everyone involved mm -hmm. um my my initial thoughts on the first video i did was that uh and this is not this is not derogatory towards mars argo but that no matter how she fares in the lawsuit, she can use this as a way to, I guess, revitalize her brand, kind of separate herself from Poppy and Titanic Sinclair and uh, and reinvigorate her fan base and come back into the creation scene um, stronger. 
Uh, so, so both of them will be trying to use the publicity of this lawsuit and um, the energy of their fan bases to their mm-hmm. to their creation advantage, no matter what happens in in the court. Yeah, it definitely made a split in the fan bases because I think before this happened, there was a there was no we didn't know where Mars Argo went, and so there was there was like it was kind of together but then when this happened it was kind of like there was a line drawn and now it's it's very split and there's a lot of there's a lot of uh stigma between that other thing is is um when they bring in josh moran into this to me it kind of seemed like um they were trying to put abuse like discredit mars argo's abuse in a sort of way like it seemed like josh moran really had nothing to do with mars argo's original lawsuit being that the domestic violence was against titanic sinclair Corey mixter and then they just pulled josh moran out of nowhere it kind of took us by surprise like no one knew anything about this so why why do you think they took that approach so uh i i kind of touched on this although i had no idea about the josh moran stuff i still don't even know who he is sorry sorry josh (laughs) i don't know (laughs) i'm uh i'm such a normie i'm like out of all this stuff but um so i didn't know who he was but the I, i mentioned before that they're gonna set up a factual scenario that's just as as much different from mars argo as possible Mm -hmm. and and part of that what it looks like they're going to do is try and make it look like, and this is going to be a tough sell given what's on in the initial lawsuit, but that Mixter and Poppy are a victim of this Josh Moran and that uh, with Mars Argo teaming up with him, they're going to try and um, state that, that she's doing it intentionally to cause them further, further harm or distress or to, uh, to get sort of under their skin or something like that. As far as the legal aspect of it, it's gonna be interesting because if they claim that there's some domestic abuse from Moran and Mars Argo is part of it, what we might see them do is try and join Moran as a party to the lawsuit with with what's called a a counterclaim or a cross claim where they'll say, um, we're being sued for this, but we're gonna sue this guy for the damages that he caused that'll be tough because of their um the restraining orders that were dismissed but it's not impossible and it could really bog things down especially if mars argo is collaborating with moran right now you know the the lawsuit's going to suck money out of everybody involved yeah so and and time and energy and all that stuff so if she's collaborating with him and they and they successfully join him into the lawsuit that'd be that'd be another way to kind of slow their creation down and hamper that hamper them in that way so that might be what they're trying to do. Yeah, it does seem like it. I know it's, this is definitely, you can tell from the approaches on all sides, it's a very personal lawsuit. They are not so much out for money as they're out for blood, it seems. Both of them seem like they're trying to damage each other's brands pretty hardcore. And uh, I know the, the community was uh, really twisted emotionally when poppy came out saying uh anything about this abuse abuse pointing it at josh moran they kind of it kind of felt like she was undermining and i I don't want to say but copying a little bit of what mars argo was initially claiming and I, i know you said that's what another thing i was wanting to know was the lawsuits the other the other documents the, yeah, the uh, restraining order. Yeah, um, now, Corey's was denied, and yep. Mariah's was dismissed. Now, I want to talk about Corey's a little bit. Uh, f- for this to be denied like this, was that just from a sheer lack of evidence on that part that they didn't even want to look into it? wasn't worth it. There's okay, so there uh, a restraining order, and this is going to get into some weird territory. Uh, restraining orders get denied for all sorts of reasons. The the vanilla legal standard for restraining order tends to be 
is someone in reasonable fear of their safety based on the evidence provided. However, courts are made up of people. People have biases and stuff like that. Here you have two men and uh, I hate to say it this way, but but courts have a prejudice against men when violence is involved. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got two men and there's violence involved, some judges being fairly old will take the look that, you know, you guys had a fight, get over it. It's done. Uh, you know, the, and, and, and that type of, that type of bias can get a, a restraining order that should be valid dismissed. I'm not saying that's what, or denied that I'm not saying that's what happened here, but, uh, for reference, if, if Corey might have been a female in the same situation, the outcome could have been different based on what happened to him. Now, as for as for Poppy, you know, we don't know the fact set that they're using for each of these restraining orders, so it's hard to say what uh, what happens with that. But uh, Mixter's was denied, so a judge did look at the evidence and determine that Mixter was not in any reasonable fear of of ongoing harm or uh, or loss. That's that's the ruling of the court. And then it looks like Poppy's was dismissed for what's called lack of prosecution, which means that she or her legal team, and it looks like they were representing themselves. And by the way, guys, if you're looking to get a restraining order, don't represent yourself. Get get help. But um, it, it looks like she or her legal team decided to step back and not pursue it. So the judge just lets it go because they're not going to issue a restraining order if someone's not going to show up and fight for it. Right. Um, now I know this is kind of conspiratorial thinking uh, but it's like how hard is it to set up a like a restraining order like is there like money involved a process that needs to go forth or let's say could someone do this just to show a paper trail of some kind in order to have leverage over someone like again i know that's very conspiratorial to say but i'm just in interested like if i if i got mad at somebody could i go to the courthouse put out a restraining order even though it gets denied just to have a paper trail um you can you can do that it's gonna it's gonna cost you a little bit of money one it's if you hire a lawyer to do it it's gonna cost you whatever they charge but two, you're going to have to pay court fees. I don't know what they are in California. In Minnesota, to file for a restraining order costs around $400 with the court. Uh, and then, of course, you've got whatever time that you put into it. Now, if you do that and the court determines that your request is frivolous, they could sanction you and make you pay the other party's legal fees uh, or make you pay some sort of restitution to them for anything they may have lost, like if they had to take a day off of work or something yeah. like that. Uh, so there, there is a little bit of risk there, but the risk is kind of low. But I do want to point out that both of these were filed back in 2015. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if they were planning something like this, that's a long game to play uh, coming two and a half years later. But it is certainly possible if they wanted some sort of ace in the hole uh, they thought they had something against um, Moran, and and who knows when when Moran and Argos or and Mars Argo started working together. If uh, if Corey breaks up with Mars Argo, Mars Argo starts hanging around and working with Moran. They could certainly have this set up, and and uh, it doesn't have to be a conspiracy at all. They could just be they could just be trying to hose the other people over. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Being as the court. The restraining order could cost four hundred dollars, but if they didn't have an attorney and they just represented themselves, it was like they went in with the whole plan to go ahead and dismiss it anyways. And then, uh, saying if there was some sort of uh, disagreement between Moran and Corey, uh, which is that video that they provided, was it was very sketchy i want to say like there was no audio and it was kind of set up in a way that where he knew that he was going to be there and again i know this is very conspiracy and out there but i do sort of do a conspiracy channel so <laughs> but yeah uh just knowing that they didn't represent themselves knowing that um they could get these dismissed to create a paper trail how the security film was set up 
it, it just it really points towards that you know if you if you guys like movies and you guys are down for that <laughs> then i mean there there's so much there's so much that can be said about that yeah and uh if whether you want to go the full conspiracy route and say that they were planning this lawsuit and it was a long con sure that's that's absolutely possible but you you really don't have to get there um when you've got the idea that you want to have someone set up for for whatever you may not they may not have had a, a lawsuit planned but they could just want something to damage the reputation mm, of this mm. josh moran guy any any number of things like that could could happen yeah and uh yeah. the other thing to remember is that these guys all of them uh argo mars argo i, I keep calling her argo mm -hmm. but mars argo poppy and and mixter are all uh producing very let's say uh some some sort of mix of like dada art and andy kaufman there's um andy it's warhol. hard to tell yeah andy warhol as well and uh there's there's a lot it's hard to tell the difference between where their art ends mm -hmm. and their life begins so they could have they could have been just setting up an art piece with uh with a lot of this stuff and then it turns into a lawsuit at some point you know uh and and that happens and that's that's not really conspiracy but you've got you've got this stuff that you can use as evidence and people will sometimes do that all right so it looks like yesterday there was actually a hearing is is that what it was and it looks like from what i'm looking at that the restraining order was continued what what can you tell us about that yeah so from from what we've got on the uh the los angeles county website it looks like uh, mars argo filed for a restraining order on april 17th of 2018 against Corey mixter and what the court does in these cases is they'll issue what's called a temporary restraining order and they'll do that uh ex parte which means only only one party is involved in that the the other person in this case mixter would have no say in that so they'll issue the order right away and what they do is they issue this order as a as a precaution because if someone is actually in danger uh based on the facts that the court gets they'll they'll want to give them the protection right away even if they can't have a hearing on it because court schedules suck and take forever to get in um so then they they had a hearing uh, set up and then uh, someone made a request to continue the hearing or basically push it back to a later date and uh, and that involves reissuing the temporary restraining order from the website we don't know um, we don't know who requested the continuance my guess would be it would be uh, Corey Mixter requesting the continuance uh, so he could get a lawyer and represent him in the restraining order case knowing that the restraining order case is going to if, if a restraining order is issued based on what mars argo has alleged in her filing that will definitely have some sort of impact on their overall lawsuit so he's going to want to have a lawyer there to to fight probably vigorously against the right. restraining order and he knows that so that's why he's trying to lawyer up because seeing as how the the previous cases that they tried to use uh, uh, were denied and dismissed and it, it probably it seems to me they were they were more for swaying public opinion he's kind of getting a little bit more serious now and probably seeking a lawyer because he knows this if if in fact uh this restraining order is continued or is made then that is going to be huge hugely in favor of mars argo in the overall lawsuit is that right 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 and you don't so uh in a in a case of abuse or domestic abuse or assault or something like that you don't have to have a restraining order to allege the abuse like mars argo doesn't need this restraining order for her claims to be valid however if she does get this restraining order then in that case she can point to the restraining order and say look we went before a judge a judge found all of my testimony and my evidence to be credible and thought it was necessary to issue a restraining order i had to get a restraining order for my own safety from this person and that is that is really really beneficial in a case like this uh to have 
to have that restraining order on file because it's something you can point to that the court has looked at but right. uh you don't you don't have to have it but it is very helpful okay all right and uh oh and real quick just mm-hmm. for for mixter you know the reason he'd want to vigorously defend this is because if he can defeat the restraining order request he can similarly say look we went to court on this uh she made her case to a judge and that judge said there wasn't anything that she needed to be afraid of because he didn't find any merit to it and there's no restraining order and this is all nonsense like that's the the flip side of that coin so both parties will have a lot riding on the outcome of this restraining order and it when did when what date did it say that that was going to be july something other it's july 12th july 12th at 8 30 in the morning I just, I just early, so. but not too early for coffee. <laughs> 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 All right, man. Uh, yep. I think that's about it. I think uh, I just wanted to have you on just to, you know, learn me and uh, all of us in the rep squad a little bit more officially. And uh, sure. we're definitely going to do some live streams in the future. And uh, Absolutely, man. I'm was, with it. Yeah, and I'm gonna have to get me some whiskey for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was great having you on, man, and I look forward to having you on in the future. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Uh, anytime, if you have any of the legal questions, or if you're if the rep squad has any legal questions, certainly uh, hit me up. I'd be happy to do these whenever. Yeah, and uh, you guys can uh, at him on Twitter. What is your Twitter? It's uh, oh man, now you now you caught me off guard. I'll, I will, I'll put it. I'm gonna put, it's Nick Rakita. I'll, I'm gonna put it in the description below. You guys can ask him some questions. You can add him. And uh, yeah, it's it's at Nick Rakita. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but if you if you search for Rakita Law or Law Splaining or whatever, you can you can typically find me. Otherwise, uh, I also have a link to it in any of my videos. If you want to check those out, yeah. Um, and give this drop this man a subscribe. He knows what he's talking about. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. That was awesome. That was awesome. Be looking forward to those live streams. And if you guys need anything, don't hesitate to hit up Nick Rakita. Um, but as interesting as this is, there's always something more interesting to me. That's right. You guessed it. I want to know what you think. So why don't you go ahead and leave your creative and your interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up for this like. And as always, brothers and sisters, I will see you in the next video. We're keeping you up to date with the most. Never be late. Turn the notifications on to full max. Because I know that you're repping. And if you're not repping, you're great. And how do you become a member of the rep squad? All you gotta do is subscribe with notifications turned on. Be in the comments section after every single video because I'm gonna be there. Greg the Cat's gonna be there. And the rest of the rep squad community is going to be there. And I expect to see you there too because this channel loves you.